Hey, what's going on guys, it's Ryan. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how you can use the power of infinite banking to invest in commercial multifamily real estate so that you can either scale your already successful real estate portfolio, or you can start to build a real estate portfolio so you can live off of your cash flow and retire in the next three to five years. And although this training here today is free, you guys are paying. You are paying with your attention. The last thing that I want to do is waste your time. So if you're not somebody who's looking to achieve financial freedom, if you are not somebody who is looking to leverage the infinite banking concept, if you're not somebody who is looking to invest in commercial multifamily real estate, then this is not for you. Also, if you do not live in the United States, this is not for you. It will not work. This real estate is only offered in the United States and the actual specific vehicle that we use for you to fund these deals with is only accessible in the United States. So unfortunately, if you do not live in the United States, this will not work for you. All right, so if you're still here, that means you do want to scale your real estate portfolio. You do want to retire in the next three to five years if you have not already. You want to live off of your cash flow. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So this is a very easy system, right? So this system is a two-part system. Part one is gonna be talking about why it's so important where you park your money. And step two is gonna be why specifically commercial multifamily real estate and how part one and part two or how step one and step two tie into each other. So again, step one is where are you putting your money and why does it matter so much? Well, let's use the first example here. If you are stashing your cash inside of a savings account, what is happening to your money or how is it affecting the way that your money is being leveraged. So if you are taking your hard-earned money and you're saving it inside of a savings account, you're earning a low interest that does not outpace inflation and you have zero control over that money. Now, why do I say that? Well, if you have your money sitting in a savings account, you're earning anywhere from 0.01 to 0.06% interest. That's less than 1% interest. I know that in 2022, the inflation hit a, a pretty staggering 9% inflation. Um, right now, it's sitting right about like 4.3%, so not as crazy. However, if you have your money sitting in a savings account, your money is not outpacing inflation. You're losing your purchasing power on your money every single year. Now, a lot of people ask me right away, what does that mean to lose purchasing power on my money? Well, you're able to purchase less and less and less and less goods, services, and commodities with the exact same amount of money. Also, you have zero control. What does that mean? Well, once you put your money into the bank, that money is no longer your money. That's the bank's money. Now, you're putting your money into the bank, hoping that once they invest that money, that they end up getting it back, and which they'll give you a very low amount of interest for it. But again, you know, banks have filed bankruptcy before, banks have gone belly up. And really when you're actually looking at the papers and you're signing to open up a, a checking or a savings account, the second that money is deposited into the bank, it's no longer yours anymore. So just keep that in mind. So with all those things being said, this account is not an optimized account. A savings account is probably one of the worst vehicles that you could stack cash into if you're trying to either start investing in, in real estate or scaling a already successful real estate portfolio. So that being said, we'll go ahead and get rid of these two. What is the second common account that most Americans use uh, to stash their capital? So the second one is probably the stock market, right? A lot of people stash cash in the stock market. Now, why am I going to say that stashing cash in the stock market is not the best place to stash cash if you're trying to invest it in real estate. Well, the reason for that is because there's a lot of risk associated with that capital inside of the stock market. It doesn't matter if it's the S&P 500, the, the NASDAQ, the Dow Jones, index funds, mutual funds, it doesn't really matter um, because it is variable, right? And in the event that you are making money and you want to take that money out of the stock market to invest in real estate, guess what? You're gonna get hit with capital gains taxes, which is obviously not ideal. The other part too is that the stock market is heavily manipulated, right? There are people who push markets all the time. Um, Wall Street obviously has an has influence on that. 
BlackRock, all these different um, private equity funds and all these different brokerages like Vanguard and Fidelity and State Street, like they all manipulate the market, right? And so because of that, it's just not the best account to use if you're trying to invest in commercial multifamily real estate. So this one is gone and let's take a look at the next one. So what is like the third most common account that people use? So retirement accounts. Retirement accounts, a lot of Americans use them. Most Americans use retirement accounts. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Retirement accounts are not a good place to stash cash if you're looking to invest that money into real estate, right? Because that money is locked up in money in jail. You can't touch that money until you're 59 and a half. Now, when I say retirement, uh, when I say retirement accounts, I am talking about like a 401k or a Roth IRA, right? So with the Roth IRA, after five years of having a Roth IRA, you can, uh, there is an, an exception to where you can take out a loan, but that's only for first time home buyers. That's not really for someone who's looking to invest in real estate. And your own personal residential piece of real estate is not an investment. I don't care what anybody else says. Um, it's only an investment for the banks. The banks are really the only people who make money off of a personal residential piece of real estate. Um, so because of that, unless you're a first time home buyer, um, after five years of having a Roth IRA, any other reason that money is gonna be locked up in money jail, and you cannot use it until you're 59 and a half. If you do decide to take that money out before you're 59 and a half, just keep in mind that uh, you will roughly get hit with 30% federal tax depending on your uh, tax bracket. You'll roughly be hit with 10% state tax, depends on which state you're in. Um, and you'll roughly be hit with a 10% IRS penalty on top of that, just simply due to the fact that it's a retirement account. It's only meant for retirement. You're not really supposed to be taking that money out to go ahead and invest in real estate. So guys, what was the whole point of us investing in real estate? It's to retire in the next three to five years instead of waiting until we're 65 to retire. If you fund a 401k or a Roth IRA, you are opting into waiting until 65 to retire. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I refuse to spend the best able-bodied years of my life to slave away for somebody else, be somebody else's passive income stream, and build somebody else's empire, build somebody else's company, and be a tax write-off for them. I refuse to do any of that. I would much rather take control of my life, put my money towards income-producing assets, in this specific case, commercial multifamily real estate. I'm gonna go into the reasons why that I specifically chose that route. We want to retire through the passive income from the commercial multifamily real estate. You can do it. It just depends on how much your, your monthly expenses are, once you kind of calculate how much you need to invest in order to get the same amount back to cover your expenses and to sell cash left over, guys, you can retire in literally three to five years. You don't need to wait until you're either 59 and a half, 62 or 65 to retire. You don't have to do that. Also, there are contribution limits with the uh, different types of retirement accounts. Sometimes it's, you know, 7,500 a year is the max you can put into it. Um, with other retirement accounts, it's a max of 22,500 a year that, that you can contribute to it. Or if you make over $153,000 a year, you are not even eligible to participate in a Roth IRA. You, you, can't, you cannot contribute to one because you make too much money, right? They don't allow you to contribute into, into that. And so those are the main reasons why we're not going to be using, for our system, we're not going to be using retirement accounts as one of the vehicles that we're going to be funding our real estate deals through. So the financial vehicle that we're going to be using to actually fund these deals is going to be the IUL. Now, there are a few reasons why I specifically chose the IUL and why I personally use an IUL to fund my own real estate investments and why thousands of my clients have done the exact same thing. Now, with the IUL, the money inside of the IUL is liquid. Right, Because of tax code um, 7702, you have tax-free access to those funds. You also have market protection inside of the IUL because you have a 0% floor. Now, a 0% floor literally just means you only contribute in the upward trend of the stock market and you never participate in the downward trend of the stock market. 
So the way that that really works is that when you're funding money into the IUL, about 95% of that goes into like safe bonds. And then the other 5% of that goes into options. And they're making calls and putting puts on your money, but they set it up to where if the market ever goes, drops below a specific point, then they sell everything off and there's no loss and there's only an option for a gain. And out of the bonds that they're, uh, that the actual IUL that your money is going to be uh, tracking are really safe corporate bonds. And you get to choose any of the types of indexes that you would like your money to be tracking inside of the IUL. Now, that could be the S&P 500. It could be literally any type of indice. Just know that it's not like investing in the stock market. Your money is mirroring the stock market through cash via life insurance. So if you've never heard me talk about the IUL and my other types of content, whether it's on reels, shorts, or um, on YouTube, then IUO is a cash via life insurance policy, which is exactly how we're able to take advantage of all these things here. The next thing here is that all the interest that you earn inside of the policy is actually earning that high yield of interest 100% tax free. And that again is because it's not an investment, right? Your money is not in the stock market, like, a, like traditionally investing in the stock market you got to pay those capital gains taxes. Well, with your money sitting inside of an IUL and earning interest, it's life insurance. It's not an investment vehicle, which means that you can't tax it, which is why you get that tax-free growth. There is no capital gains taxes associated with the IUL. Another part that really helps out with the growth and the loans inside the IUL, when you, when you end up passing away, the death benefit is actually, it gets paid out to your beneficiaries but we like to set up, set it up to where a trust is the beneficiary of your policy and then the money pays into a trust and then you just make you know your children, whoever you want, the beneficiaries of the trust. It just helps out a lot in the sense of where you are actually still taking control or having control of the money even though you're no longer here anymore. Um, that ties into the Rockefeller waterfall method. I have videos on my YouTube channel about that as well, as well as in our free community, I have videos about the uh, generational wealth legacy planning in the Rockefeller waterfall method. Um, and so yeah, that death benefit pays out 100% tax free, whether it's to your beneficiaries or into a trust. Then there's the uninterrupted compound interest. Now this is the most important part of, of step one of this process. The most important part of step one is using the IUL to take advantage of this right here, the uninterrupted compound interest. Now because of the uninterrupted compound interest, what's gonna happen is that all the money that you're placing into the IUL is again going to be earning a high yield of interest tax-free with zero market risk. But the reason why it's uninterrupted is because the money that you put in, the premium, uh, which is your principal plus interest earned collectively is called something that's called accumulated value. How much money have you accumulated inside of the policy, right? So again, it's just your principal plus interest earned added together is your accumulated value. Now, whatever your accumulated value is, the life insurance carrier will give you up to the same amount in the form of a line of credit, which they call cash value. So the cash value is the amount of money you can take out in the form of a loan, and the accumulated value is your principal that you've paid into the policy, which is also called premium, as well as all the interest you've earned on top of that. So those two numbers collectively added together is your accumulated value. Whatever amount of accumulated value you have, you can earn up to the same amount in the cash value, right? So I'm going to show you that right now through this illustration. So pretty simple. Whatever amount of money you put into one, it reflects on the other side. Now, the reason why this is uninterrupted is because all of this money that's in the accumulated value never gets touched ever, which is why it's uninterrupted compound interest. So all of this money that's sitting in the accumulated value forever for the rest of the time that the policy is in force, which should be forever because an IUL is cash value life insurance, uh, which means it's permanent life insurance. All this money in the accumulated value will continue to earn a high yield of interest, 100% tax-free with zero market risk, which none of the other accounts that, that we went over do. Not only that, but now we can start taking money out of the cash value. Now, a lot of people ask, Ryan, how long do you have to wait to do that? You don't really have to wait at all. It's just whatever cash value is posted there is able to be taken out. And so now that you're placing your money into the IUL, you have accumulated value, you have cash value. 
now that you have this cash value, you can start taking loans. And now we're gonna be using these loans for real estate. Why? Because real estate produces the most millionaires. Real estate is a real tangible asset that you can invest in. But there's really two types of real estate. There is single family residential real estate, and there is commercial multifamily real estate. So with the single family um, residential real estate, the reason why we don't invest in that is because it's not passive at all. You literally have to be like your own manager to invest in this. Uh, you have to deal with tenants, termites, and toilets. You're always going to be running around. You're always going to, uh, you're going to be a landlord. You're not going to be a real estate investor, right? I'm not teaching anybody how to be a landlord. A landlord is a full-time job. I am teaching my clients how to be, how to become passive real estate investors. And the uh, one other reason why we don't do single family real estate is because one door renting, if it has one door, you live in it, right? You don't invest in that, right? The only, the only one door piece of property that you have should be your residential property and not your investment properties. Another reason why we do not use single family residential properties is because of the way that they're valued. Guys, they use the comp system. They use a comparables uh, system. So they look at all the similar houses, similar square footage, similar bedrooms and bathrooms, and they see how much all those other properties are, are selling for in your area. Now, here's the problem with that. Here's, here's a little bit of uh, history on myself. My parents got into a lot of credit card debt, had to pull a lot of equity out of their home to pay off that credit card debt. And then what happened is that their mortgage was extremely expensive because they pulled all the equity out of the house and they couldn't afford the mortgage anymore and they foreclosed on the house. And then the bank sold the house for pennies on the dollar. And because their house sold for such a low amount, just because the bank was trying to get rid of it, what ended up happening is that that brought down the value of all the other similar houses, similar bedroom size, uh, similar square footage, similar number of bathrooms in the house, that brought down the value of all the houses in our neighborhood and it was completely out of their control. When you own a single family piece of property, a single family residential piece of property, the value of the home is not just simply based on forced appreciation or on just appreciation. It's based on the comparables. Your neighbor could let their house rot and that's gonna affect the value of your home. Now, when it comes to money, I want to have full control over my money. Hence why we do everything that we do in step one. You're, you're taking full control over your money. Now going into step two, we want full control over the actual investment that we're going to be investing in. So that is commercial multifamily real estate, specifically syndication deals. Now, if you have not heard ever of syndication deals, I have an entire free course for you guys about syndication real estate and commercial multifamily real estate in my community below. It's a free community. Go ahead and join it. Um, but the reason why that we specifically use this type of real estate to invest in is because it's completely passive, right? There is a general partner and a limited partner. You investing into the deal with your own private money, you are a limited partner partner. You don't have to do anything. We have a team as our general partners, right? And if you actually, you know, want to look into investing with us and all those certain types of things, then that's when you can learn more about um, our partners, our general partners, who the property managers are, all those different things. But that's not really important for this video. We're just trying to go over the system here. Um, uh, it, so it's completely passive. You are a passive investor. You're not a landlord. Then we also have forced appreciation on these deals. So what we do is we specifically try to find properties. And when and guys, when we say commercial multifamily real estate, we're not touching or looking at anything under 100 units. We are getting large apartment complexes, 100 units plus. Um, and so the way that we force appreciation is that we'll come in before we even buy it, before we even put an offer on it, we're already assessing how are we going to force appreciation into this deal. Oh, this landlord has owned this apartment complex for let's just say 20 years. 
He's friends with a lot of the tenants. He has not raised their rents in 10 years. He's still charging these guys $900 in rent, even though the market rent is $1,500. So we can walk into equity on this deal because as soon as we take the deal over, we're going to raise all the rents up to market rent. And so we're walking into equity on that deal. Another thing too, if there's a parking lot, there's no, there's no uh, reserved parking. Anybody can just park in, in any parking spot. If there's a nick on your door, if someone you know, side swipes your car or whatever it may be, nobody knows what happened to it. Uh, a big way that we avoid that is just by having reserved parking. You pay you know, $250 a month to have your own parking spot. If not, you park in this other area, guest area, which is normally like the back of the parking lot, right? We offer um, valet trash. We don't want our, our tenants dragging their trash bags that have holes in it, leaking all this nasty juice all over the floors of our apartment complex. So what we do is we instill valet trash to where everyone on a, on a specific day, let's just say Thursday mornings, you know, leave your trash can outside of your door and we'll have our people come and we'll pick up all your guys' trash for you, right? Those are all ways that we can force appreciation in, into the deal. Well, you're probably asking, well, all your naming are just ways that the apartment complex makes money. How, how does that actually force the appreciation of the property? Commercial real estate is based off one thing, net operating income, NOI, right? At the end of the day, how much money did the property cash flow? How much money did the property make, right? So if you buy a property that cash flows, let's just say like $300,000 a month, and then all of a sudden you add all these things, you increase rents, you increase the occupancy rate, you go ahead and increase uh, the amount of money that the property is making through valet trash or you, you, add pet, you, you add pet rent, right? Everyone wants to have their dogs during COVID. Everybody got animals. Um, pet rent is huge, right? So you charge the pet rent. An extra $500 a month if, if you want a pet. If you want to have a pet that bad, fine. You can have it in our apartment. We're going to have to replace all the carpets. We're going to have to do all these things and we'll charge you $500 a month for it or $450 or $300. It kind of depends on the area, right? So now when we look at how much money the apartment building made in one month, it's making way more money in a month. Then, then we multiply that by 12. You know, let's just say apartment building was doing uh, $2 million a year. Now it's doing, you know, $3.3 in a year. We can turn around and sell that property in literally 18 months and we will all of ourselves and all of our investors will walk out with all their money plus whatever like the ARR was. Or we can keep it for a super long time, right? And so that is why we love multifamily commercial real estate. We control how much the property will sell for because we control how much money the property cash flows every month, which then we multiply by 12 and we get to control how much money that the uh, real estate makes in a year. Right. Another thing too that's pretty cool is that we never want the occupancy rate to be 100%. That just means you're not charging enough. Right. Having it between like 95 to 97% is like perfect because that means that, um, you know, we're right in that market rent, right? Where people are willing to pay. Um, also, there's four ways, there are four ways that we make money in commercial multifamily real estate. One of the ways is through cash flow. Right, monthly or quarterly cash flow kind of depends on how we structure the deal. Every single deal is a little bit different. Um, also, there's that appreciation, right? Not gonna go into that. I just talked about appreciation. The other part is amortization. That is amazing, right? We are getting approved for debt, right? We're going to a bank. A bank is gonna give us maybe like a 70% LTV. So 70% of the money that we use to buy a massive, large $52 million real estate deal is 70% of it is from a bank. The other 30% we raise private capital for. And those are our investors, like you got, like yourselves, you watching this. If you privately invest your money into the deal, the bank is investing, you know, about, uh, we're, they're not investing in it, they're just giving, they're lending us the money to buy it for about 70. The other 30% comes from the private um, investors that want in on this deal. And then what happens is our tenants pay down our debt for us. We get approved for the loan, but we're not paying the loan, guys. Our tenants are paying the loan down for us. That's how you create money through debt. 
Robert Kiyosaki is literally famous for this one concept, is wealth is created through debt. How is that possible? Well, you get approved for the debt. You get approved for this money. You just got, you know, so let's just say that you, you get a property that's $10 million, $7 million you got approved for from the bank, $3 million you have to raise a private money, which is completely fine because um, we want investors to invest in our deals. That's how people make money, right? Imagine getting $7 million, buying real estate with it, that cash flows, and then never paying that $7 million back. How is that possible? Amortization. Your tenants are paying the debt off for you. They're paying a $7 million loan for you. So that's the third way you make money through, through these deals. The fourth way you make money through these deals is through taxes all the tax incentives. What is the easiest and fastest way to increase your income? Reduce your taxes. Reduce your tax liability. When we get one of these deals, we're gonna do something that's called a cost segregation. Someone's gonna come and they're gonna evaluate the amount of depreciation that will happen in between about 27 and a half years. Then what we do is we initiate a bonus depreciation, which is where we're taking all the depreciation throughout X amount of years, we're forcing it right in year one, and we get to completely wipe out all of our tax liability through something that's called a K-1. So you'll get a K-1 when you invest in one of these properties. So if you're a high income earner, high income earners love to invest in multifamily commercial real estate because they get a K-1 and it really, really helps with just wiping down their tax liability for the year. Also, right now is the best time to invest in multifamily real estate. Why is that? Well, inflation is pretty high, right? Or it was really high. It's starting to come down a little bit. However, interest rates are really high. A lot of people are not able to buy houses right now because the interest rates are just too high. They can't afford it or they can't get approved for it. And so because of that, what is happening? They're forced to rent they're forced to rent because of that. When interest rates come down, because they will, interest rates are gonna come down, it's an election year, you know, how can we predict, what's the best way to try, you know, obviously no one has a crystal ball, but how can you try to, to predict the future? Look at what's happened in the past. Every time that there's an election year, the current president will drop um, interest rates to kind of help with their campaign, right? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna see. Interest rates are gonna drop, but guess what? The United States is still at a housing shortage of over 5 million houses. These houses are only gonna go to the highest bidder, which is why the bubble keeps getting inflated. The housing market bubble keeps getting inflated. Why? Because people are overpaying for houses. People are so desperate to get into their houses that they're outbidding each other, which is why the median home price is gonna go from about 415,000 to half a million dollars here pretty soon. If you watch any of these other really big real estate moguls, if you listen, if you listen to them on podcasts or if you read their books or if you read their blogs or if you watch their content, they're all saying very similar stuff, guys. So again, what does that mean? It means that houses are just going to continue to keep getting more and more and more and more expensive to buy, which is going to just create a bigger, bigger, bigger gap between the wealthy and the poor, completely wiping out the middle class. And the United States is really going to turn into a renter's nation. 1% will own, the other 99% will rent. And inside of these apartment complexes, there's everything. There's office spaces, there's a pool, there's a gym. Like before you know it, the amenities that that these developers are gonna build into these apartment complex, there's gonna be no reason for people to leave their houses. That's just the direction that this country is going into, which is why it is the best time to invest in commercial multifamily real estate. Also, it's the safest type of real estate to invest in. If I have an apartment complex with a hundred apartments in it, if I have a hundred doors and 20 people move out, I could care less, man. I still have an 80% occupancy rate. Well, if you have 10 single family houses and 10 people move out on, on the same day, you're on the hook to pay for 10 mortgages. That's where single family gets scary. If we have 10 people, 20 people move out in one day, we don't care. We still have 80 other tenants that are paying all of our bills. So we really could care less. We're just gonna do some more marketing and fill those apartments back up. Does not matter. Uh, so it's very, very, very safe as well. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is our two-step system. Step one, 
leverage an IUL so that you can take advantage of uninterrupted compound interest, aka infinite banking. Step two, utilize the infinite banking cash value loans to actually invest in commercial multifamily real estate so that you can start living off of the either monthly or quarterly cash flows depending on that specific deal. Every deal is a little bit different. And once you start living off of those uh, cash flows and the cash flows are paying for your expenses and your lifestyle, you can officially retire and this can easily be done in three to five years, if not sooner, depending on how much capital you have in hand. Also, if you are already a successful real estate investor, you invest in real estate full time. If you want to leave the single family arena and you want to get into commercial multifamily, this same two step system will work the exact same for you as well. Whether you're starting or scaling uh, your investment portfolio, this will work. All right, guys, there's going to be two buttons down below this video. There's going to be one button to give you the option to book a quick 15 minute discovery phone call with us. If you guys have any questions, if you guys want to learn more about some specifics, um, then go ahead and jump on a quick discovery phone call with us just so we can answer those questions for you. If you're looking to get started and you want to start implementing this, you want to start plugging and playing some numbers, seeing how long it'll take for you to retire based on how much income you're, you're making, based on how much your expenses are, and based on how much uh, you can invest, then go ahead, still book that 15 minute discovery phone call with us. If you're really just looking to get some more information about the IUL and commercial multifamily real estate, then you can join our community down below. I have two, actually three free courses. I have one free course that just walks you through exactly what the IUL is. I have another course that walks you through what infinite banking is. And then I have another course walking you through exactly what commercial multifamily real estate is, how it works, what are syndications? How do syndications work? All those three, all those three things. So I got, I got you covered in all aspects. Also, go ahead and check out our testimonials down below as well. We've worked with thousands of clients. Uh, we've helped thousands of people retire, and we've helped hundreds of people already scale their successful real estate investment portfolios. So, without further ado, thank you for watching this video, and hope that you found it valuable.